What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of 10K on the Bay, my journey to 10,000 live listings. Today, we are going to start part two of our Amazon series of how to get started for beginners. I have Nicholas Bosch. This is awesome. Part two. Why don't you introduce yourself again and give us an outline of what we're going over today? Right. So again, another interview who I am. So again, just short. Um, I was 11 years old. I started working at a farm. I started looking for ways to make money online. I bought an affiliate marketing course. Didn't find any success with that. That was when I was 19. When I was 20, I started finding Amazon FBA. Um, I found a lot of success with it after like six months. I took a couple of times, a couple of products to, I failed at them for the first bit and then found a lot of success. And then once I got some success, I started you know, using the money I made from the farm as a young kid, um, being very sheltered and very religious in the family. So I was not touched with money. So I had a lot of money put away. So I found success and then I put all my money toward it, quit my job and um, yeah, now I'm just doing this for just, uh, just about two years now, so. It's awesome. So it's exciting. By the way, you're still young guys. So we're getting all these um, products set up in the last video. You talked about sort of how to do some research, um, figure out um, um, products that have low competition and then that you may want to enter into that market. And today we're going to go over a little bit about how you can start contacting suppliers. Are you doing, um, are you, are you going to give us a live example or how are you going to start doing this? Yeah, so I'll go over a live example. There's some things I'm going to kind of hold away. Like if you go to the messaging system, it'll show up all my messages. So I'm just going to kind of hold back from that, but I have to like kind of think it through because I didn't prepare for this too much, like in the sense of like going through all my tabs and make sure that it was like incognito or something like that. You know what I mean? No so worries. I'll, I'll go a full screen share. I'll show them because I want to kind of give them the actual steps rather than just um, going off the cuff, and, you know. Sounds good. And real quick, guys, if you guys have any questions, um, please follow Nicholas on Instagram or he has a YouTube channel as well, which I'm going to link in the description below right after this video. So, um, yeah, you, we're, we're totally um, transparent. If you guys have any questions or need a little bit more help, reach out to us and we'll we'll help you out. So go ahead. You can start sharing your screen. OK, so i going to share this quickly. So I hope you guys can kind of see that. So what you want to do is like so, for example, we're going to Amazon right.com because I'm selling um, in the United States. So for example, I want to sell, um, let's see. Um, I was looking at, this is a product I'm looking at. I'll give you, I'll let you guys see it for a second. So it's, it's an interesting product. It's kind of competitive, but I'm willing to get into there because I've seen Viv Real Home. He's the best seller. He's doing amazing. So I'm going to show you guys exactly what I was showing you guys last time with product research is the little general scout drop down and then break it down why I think I can get into it. Um, obviously, some people wouldn't because it takes a lot of capital because it's not a cheap product to start. As you can see, it's got a high price point, which is a higher barrier of entry, which I'd like to see. So you see guys, 53 reviews. So that's a sponsored ad. He's paying to be there, but he's also here organically. So he's the second spot organic. See, Pete Dreyer's top, Viv Real Home is the second one. So he's got 53 reviews, even $50,000 a month. So you cut that, see his profit margin is 40 to 50%. He's making $22,000 roughly. Um, so great there. Um, this one's a little high to compete with, but if you're looking anywhere to compete, it's probably this guy right here, um, this one, which is not doing too well, and then these two, as well as this one. So I can feel like um, if you hover over them, usually it shows you the, what they are. So this one right here is the black one, all right? So this is totally different. So you got the next one with lower reviews is the white one. Looks looks kind of cheap. And then you got this one is doing decently well. It's still different again, but the only person that's really selling this is this guy. He's the only one selling this actual boot dryer so i was like well maybe they want the legitimate boot dryer and not just some like shove and shoe kind of dryer right so that's why i looked at it so what i went out and did is i go over here and i just use alibaba that's my biggest source of ways to find products now you can go over to thomas.net as well or the india alibaba as well as the vietnam alibaba but i like the chinese alibaba obviously because um 90 percent of the products are there so what we want to do then is just go over here and just go and I, I had an issue i already know what i'm doing but um, I tried boot dryer, but there was no black one. So you go black boot dryer, right? So I'll kind of show you guys some, I was like kind of scrolling. This is what you do. So you literally just go down here and there's a couple things I want to touch base on actually too. So gold supplier is come, uh, there's a myth out there, um, that with gold supplier, people can, or suppliers can actually buy the actual tag. So you can see here, over here, it says six years gold supplier. This means they never really, um, you know, messed up in a sense where they had, created a completely different product than this, uh, the actual person like me would want. So we reported them to Alibaba. So um, you get like a strike then. So you'll lose this if you do like a major issue. So apparently 
according to a myth out there, people say that you can actually, they can actually buy them. So I still like to say, uh, say that anything over two years, I'll go with. So that's one important thing. Another thing is trade assurance. Now, what is trade assurance? It pretty much um, when you want to go ahead with a product, you're going to have to go pay for it. And what trade assurance does is you pay Alibaba 30%. Alibaba transfers that to the supplier and they start to make the products. So and then they go make the full bulk of it. And then once it's complete, they ship it or that you pay the 70% to Alibaba, Alibaba receives it, lets them know, they ship it, and then Alibaba sends them the money. So until it's shipped, do they get the 70% in the end? So um, it's, it's a secure way of paying. I really like it that way. Uh, you can use it through credit cards. Um, I like to pay through PayPal, um, which is another way because it's double security. So um, that's something else we'll talk about in another video as well, how to pay. Because PayPal, obviously, it's a double whammy because you can put your credit card on PayPal. So if you can't get your money back through PayPal, you can try some MasterCard. So it's kind of a two-way um, street there. So what you want to do is kind of look around. So I'm looking for the black one. So right here, I can see one already. So you're looking about eight, eight and a half or $8.2 uh, per piece. Now, minimum order quantity is something that I always talk about. People people are always worried like, hey, this guy wants something like a thousand. He wants a 20 foot, you know, a bin full of, you know, goods. But it's all preferably. It's what they would prefer, right? They're going to might increase this price by like 30 cents to bring this down to 500 because I'm going to try to start with 500. Now, I'm not saying I'm going into this product right now. I'm looking at it closely. I haven't got the final quotes yet. So I just kind of keep scrolling around. So I've seen 8.2 already. Um, so like this, you can see this one already out there. And I just kept looking till you know, here we got some more. So, you know, 8 to 15. So it's, you know, maybe a little more expensive. But uh, here we got 7 to 10. So, you know, it's... Let's just call it, you know, it's gonna be about 850, right? That's halfway. Yeah, halfway. So the other one's 8.2. So we'll call it 850. So um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to my FBA calculator. So you can just go FBA calculator on Google. Sorry, that was a little quick. Um, and you just click it here. So then what you wanna do is go over to the actual seller of it. So Viv Real Home. And you just click on his listing because you wanna sell the same product. So again, in the URL here, after the DP with the forward slash, there's a B0, always starts with B0 and it has like a bunch of letters and numbers. This is what you call the ASIN. Um, it pretty much tells you what product it is. It tells Amazon what kind of product it is. So you grab that, copy that, and just paste it right into this search bar. And then it'll pull up the product. Um, I guess they sell two different ones. So you select that one. And it says it's 2.6 pounds and it shows dimensions and it shows the product. Now what I would do is go over here and be like, okay, um, 33.99. So that's what he's selling it for. So I don't fill out again the your fulfillment side. I fill up only the Amazon fulfillment side. So over here, go thirty three ninety nine, and then ship to Amazon. Um, that's something that I like to discuss as well. So it's about um, for each kilo or for each kilogram, it's about four point five to five point five dollars um, per kilogram to ship by air. By sea, it's about a dollar to dollar fifty per kilogram by sea. So you kind of want to like figure out if it's worth your time going half, like say 250 units by air and then the next 250 by sea. Kind of do a split order or do all of it by air and your second shipment by sea or do all of it by sea because it's too expensive to do all by air ever. So kind of want to figure that out. So again, with I'm just going to uh, take into consideration what's going to cost by air. So for three pounds, I'm going to say it's about like six to seven dollars. Pretty expensive. I could probably get this down to like one fifty two dollars by sea. So we'll say it's like six we we'll seven dollars. We'll overshoot it, right? So cost of probably was going to be about eight fifty, right? So we'll go eight point five, and then we just calculate that. So I'm looking at about a seven fifty two, and it's like way overshot. I'm looking at worst case scenario. It's twenty two percent margin. So I do actually. You know what? I'm going to take the risk to do this. I'm give me one second here. I'm going to go over to my orders here and see what I can pull up. If, if it does show up something I don't want, I'm gonna quickly exit it. <laughs> um, all right, we're good. All right, so I have over here a bunch of stuff that I've been looking at. So again, we have, um, just gotta look for it again, where exactly was my thing. Um, you know what, I'm just gonna, let you guys see some of this stuff, which is fine. Got nothing to hide here. Um, okay, so we got a shoe dryer. Um, let me see here. Um, yes, this is this one. Okay, so they are asking, so I sent them an email, and 
they reply saying so many pieces. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out exactly the amount here. All right, so they're asking 650 a piece. So I knew it was 650, so I got it down a little bit from negotiating. So it's 650, and I know I was getting about it was about four dollars by air. So I could probably get this down to like a dollar twenty-five. So this is kind of my quote right here. So I got twelve dollars fifty-two cents. So it's a little low on the margin, but this is even good. I like to see anything over thirty percent. Now I prefer anything forty percent above, but this is definitely good because I haven't even gone by C yet. So this is my first order by air. If I go by C, I could probably knock this down to about um, say high, high amounts two dollars, which would bring me to forty-two percent. So that's definitely good. So for air, we'll go four dollars, right? So we're back at twelve dollars net profit per piece. Now we're gonna go back to this product. You do a drop down on this product page. So he's doing about 1400 sales a month, which is <clears throat> insane. So you kind of just go over here and you can say, okay, we're going to share the marketplace. So I'm just going to put it in half. So you have 700 units and you would make roughly, you know, about $9,000 a month profit from this product. So this is a product I'm looking at very closely for this reason, because there's nobody else really selling what he's selling. Like if you look on the first page again, he's got this guy, Pete Dreyer, the top guy, but then the rest, are all selling something different, right? So there's nobody really selling the same one. Here you got the same uh, same guy again, Pete Dreyer. But there's nobody else really selling it. So I feel like this is a good product to get into. There's not much, um, you know, marketplace or not too many competitors of the same product. So it's not about um, driving the price to the bottom as fast as you can. It's about what the quality is and the type of product because this is obviously a much different. Um, and then this. Um, so that's kind of what I'm looking for when I look for my products, stuff like that. So again, all you gotta do is go into Alibaba, just type in what you want. So you can just do boot dryer. Um, I know mine didn't pop up the black one, so I typed in black boot dryer. So I found it that way. And then you just pretty much reach out to them. All you gotta do is click the contact supplier over here. And then you just, um, so I'll click it again. I'll click it so you guys can see. So you click on this and you, you just literally go in there and it's kind of like, I always write emergency order first, um, but that's just cause I want them to reply right away. So I go, hey there. And then I pretty much just go off about it. So I want, hey, I want 500 units by air. Um, and by C, please let me give me a quote. I want custom packaging. I want a logo on my product, um, as well as you know, um, you know, my branding, my actual you know stuff, my own own actual logo imp engraved in the actual plastic of the product itself, um, so that I can protect myself against hijackers on my listing. So if they come and sell a generic product on my listing, I can get them removed. Um, and then I kind of tell them like, hey, don't um, just message me a blank message back. Um, I want an in-depth message, um, and then also let them know that. Um, any order that they decide to go through with, if they decide to you know go through with you and you you pay them, that every day they're late from the actual finish date that they said they're gonna do it, like say the December first, they were gonna finish the um, the production by. You just say any day later than that is a hundred dollars per day that we get back because you were late. So that's kind of how I do. I fill a whole email and then send it to them. And literally, I just, all I do is go over here and you can't copy. If you go here, you right click, it just shows it this. So little tip for you guys, you guys try, just do control C, copy, and you just go from every single one. Just, you know, if you want to do this one, you just go over here, click it, and then control V, just paste it again. It's literally just copy, paste, copy, paste, and it's done. And then you just contact like 10 or 20 of them, uh, depending how many suppliers there are, and then kind of work the quotes out from there. So that's kind of how that works. Does that kind of make sense, Chris? Do you recommend contacting all the suppliers? Yes, I do. I, I highly recommend it. Some people don't reach out to enough. And I actually talked to somebody recently about it. He was like, I don't, I can't find the same deal as you got. Cause I was talking to before this call with you about the, same, the guy that was selling the same product as me. And I was being like transparent with him. I was like, I got this, this price. And he's like, I can only get $21 per unit. And I was like, but I got 18 and it's a pretty expensive product to sell. But I was like, I got a lower price. Now you have to find out why, you know, cause I'm not just going to give my supplier. I'm going to make him go through that work as a student and be like, you know, you got to find it. So I found it you gotta be able to find it too, right? So I just made him work harder at it. Sure enough, he did find it, but he didn't contact enough suppliers. So sometimes it's just that supplier on page one or two, maybe on the bottom of page one or top of page two, that all of a sudden it has that better deal because the ones that maybe can't afford to be on page one, you know what I mean? They're not able to um, afford to rank that high on Alibaba, but so they can also offer you a lower price because they're trying to like get more customers at a lower price per unit. So it, it all depends. Not always the biggest companies on Alibaba can actually um, give you the best deal because they're usually also selling on Amazon too. So that's it's a, fan, a little. That's a sorry. fantastic. That's a fantastic piece of advice. I mean, if you're a small guy, you're probably willing to give a better deal just to start getting some traction. Exactly. And, um, also, there's a question in the chat. 
how do you know if any of these people um, might be the manufacturer? How do I know if they're the manufacturer? Um, that's a tough one uh, in terms of like this product because you generally can pick it out if they're a manufacturer, but you don't know if they are the manufacturer or who the manufacturer is. That's a tough one. Um, sometimes they have it actually as their brand name. They, they call themselves by the manufacturer name as well. Not right. always, but a lot of the time we can see is like, um, like probably here, uh, not here because this is probably like all good quality stuff. But uh, usually if you go like fidget spinners or something that's just cheap, it's toy related. It'll just, you know, it'll be bad titles. If you click on the listing, it'll have like, you know, some really bad writing on in here. Like you can totally tell it's not, you know, correct English. It's broken English. Like it's just no good, right? So that's how I can pick it apart. Like, okay, this is a Chinese seller. And usually when you see the Chinese seller, they also, um, like if I go back here, well, like, actually let's just do this. Um, I'll find a product that's just random. Like just, you know, something I could probably just think of at the top. Um, Actually, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. But pretty much what I'm saying is like, if there's literally no way to differentiate, the Chinese supplier will always price themselves the lowest because they can offer, uh, afford that. And whoever's the cheapest usually is the Chinese supplier because they'll try to drive that price right to the bottom. Now, when it comes to like selling uh, kitchenware, pans, pots, pans, um, you know, luxury martini shakers, all that kind of stuff like copper mugs, you know, I sell like some pretty fancy stuff out there. It comes down to how well you brand it. Like the beautiful custom packaging, show that in your first picture. Like the beautiful, like you know, lighting around your product, sitting in like a you know a walnut wood countertop with like cabinets around it. You want to show the scenery, the lifestyle, because Canadians and Americans don't buy always based off of. Um, here, I'll just quickly um, stop sharing. Um, they don't usually just buy off of you know the cheapest deal and the cheapest price. They sh buy usually based on quality. So, for example, I'm selling, you know. The waxing cow showing last example, you know, when I'm selling that, it's all about how well you custom package, you know, the nice beanbag look, the well, the good pictures, the well written out bullet points, right? And it's also good for ranking to have those bullet points there um, in the product description, giving you full detail how to use it step by step by step, right? Having the details on the packaging itself when it comes to their house, like how to use it, and then like the design, right? So all that kind of stuff is very important. You can actually like sell a whole lot more, or you can sell a whole lot at a whole lot higher price branding yourself a lot better because most Chinese will just slap on their own company logo and just drive the price down and their pictures will really will look really bad. So so can you give us a, a couple of tips on how to do your branding? Like you talked about more beautiful packaging. You talked about, um, it, do you think that the name of the product matters? Do you want to come up with a, a trendy name? How do you make yourself appear more luxurious or above all the other people who are selling the same thing? Okay, so when it comes to like branding, you don't have to have, I like, guess, you know, a spiftastic name or something like that. You don't have to be like something really cool. Like my brand name is nothing fancy either. But for example, like my brand name is not uh, Bosch Innovations, but you could call yourself that and then have like Bosch, you know, you know, written in cursive or something like that, right? You can always like make things, you know, fancy. But I mean, Bosch is trademark, obviously, there's a big brand out there for that. But, um, you know, you could, Whatever it may be, like your name's like James or something like that. It could be like James Innovations with James sign just all fancied up. And then just have like the James name all fancied up and then innovations below it. Right. Or you can just have like a nice logo, only have the logo on the product and then have the name on the seller account. So some people will actually like show it. So I can go back to here. So this guy, I think he did an amazing job. So this is a good example of a guy that I want to compete with. He's also a tough competitor. This is what you call beautiful pictures, right? I don't think they're high quality though. Um, oh, I don't think I'm screen sharing. Yeah, just go ahead and screen share. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. No worries. All right, so screen share. All right, so this is like a good competitor, right? This is the guy I want to compete with. So he's got high definition, so I can scroll over it, and it's like, you know, well done. He even faded out the black, as you can see. You see how it's like white around the sides of it? So he's kind of like pushing out the contrast, which is really smart. And then here, it's not high quality. I can't zoom over it, but it's like good pictures, though. You know, that's, that's these are really good pictures. You know, well-written bullet points, they fully filled out. You know, it's very well done. And then also, you know, I don't know if he has a good description. Oh, he has a good description, right? It's like e ETL certified, user friendly, you know, warm shoes. And he gets all the details about it. So this is the guy that's trying to rank, you know, the best for his product. And he's doing a really good job. Now, if you can see on his product, let's see if I can get closer to it. Um, all right. So this is probably the closest one I can get to. Actually, if I can zoom in. Okay. You see on the, right on the bottom there, 
like right where my mouse is, like the, the white there, but also on the screen itself, the bigger side of things. Um, it shows his brand name. So it just shows Viv Real. Some people would just put like, you know, just their name of the company, but he also has a logo, I'm sure. But that probably go on the box packaging. So he just puts Viv Real, but his brand name is actually Viv Real Homes. So he only puts part of it on there. So that's like another way you could do it too. All you got to put that on there. So now if you have a, a hijacker, like I showed in the last um, uh, episode, um, you can actually get them removed because they'll be selling, selling a generic product of yours and they won't have your actual logo. And just this logo right here makes your product um, not the same as theirs. Like it's actually a completely different product according to Amazon than somebody selling a generic product. So um, it's very, very, very important to have branding on there because then you have that leeway to get them reported and take them off your listing. So. So I have a question on that part. So um, I started, I'm just starting to look at um, AliExpress and asking how much it would cost to get something embossed or imprinted on there. And it changes the minimum order quantity generally, but not actually as much as you think. Um, I was looking at a product that was 100 items. I mean, 100 was the minimum order without any kind of logo and 300 was the order if, they, if, you, if I wanted to print it. And they actually did not charge more. I just had to order 300. So I don't know if that's common or something, an incentive for them to do it for you. So a common thing with, um, on Alibaba is, you know, you can get logo done quite easily. You know, they'll negotiate the logo. I, I can get the logo for easy for free, the barcode printing for free and the carton label printing for free on my cartons. And when it comes to custom packaging is that's where they start increasing stuff. They make you pay an extra 200, $600 American, or they try to increase the minimum order quantity. That's usually where the negotiation becomes tougher is because it's outsourced. Suppliers don't actually make their own custom packaging. They send out the design that you give them and they send it over to another manufacturer that creates a box design and designs it for them. And they have to pay that supplier to do that and then send it back to them and then create those boxes as such. So do you have any tips for, you know, I've heard from, there's a lot of Amazon horror stories where what they order is not what they get. Do you have any inspectors or do you check the product before it leaves China to get an idea of what it looks like or how does that, how do you handle that? Right. So I'm just over here and screen share a second. So I go, I use this company here. Um, oh, it was coming up. There you go. So this company is called inspectionschina.com. Um, this, this is a very, very good site. Um, this you just literally contact them via email. Um, you know, you can even go on a phone chat. I like to phone, uh, go over the phone call and they they don't have that high, high of a barrier of like language, so they can speak quite well English. Um, what's, in, what's really cool about them is they actually have a person that goes on foot to the supplier the day before it leaves. So you say, okay, it's going to leave on November the 9th or say November the 10th. So today they'll go in there on foot and by the end of today, you'll get literally a hundred pages to 200 page document with pictures, details about it, every moving part, how it works, what they think of the quality. Um, and then give ask and they'll ask you for your advice. So like, do you think this should be better? Here's what you could possibly do to make it better. You know, this is me a suggestion for you. You can move forward this way, or you could continue this way. You know, they'll give you options and they'll give you like, good pictures. They give you like, you know, a graph of like, you know, the breakdown of it, like this versus that. So it, it's really cool. They really go in depth in it. It's like $180 only. So I usually do it for, um, a lot of my, uh, moving parts. Um, so if I have like an electronic um, product that has a lot of moving items in it, for example, the fingerling I showed you guys last time has like, it speaks, it you know has um, audio system inside it. Obviously it has like the tail moves, the head moves. So all these little moving parts, you want to make sure that's like, you know, inspected. But when it comes to like a bracket, like I used to sell like a steel bracket and I got removed from it, but that's because I was infringing on trademark, which is something else. But um it's just, it was a steel bracket weighed like, you know, eight pounds. So that's just like a piece of steel. I don't, you know, do it, um, an inspection on it. Cause maybe it's like not, you know, a quarter millimeter thick and it should be two millimeters thick. You know what I mean? So I wouldn't really work, worry about that. I'm worried about moving ish, moving products. No, that's an excellent tip. Also, if you do a reorder, do you order an inspection again? Um, no. So usually that's the, that's the thing is like when I go to, when I, um, my first order with my first supplier, is usually the worst. It's gonna cost you the most, but it's usually because you go by air because you wanna have the product in as soon as possible before the market kind of gets a little saturated, right? You wanna get there, you wanna get ranked, and then Amazon will start to concrete your position because you were first. And even if somebody does giveaways to kind of take you out, it's gonna be hard for them because you've been selling for a couple months already. So that's why usually people wanna go by air. Um, another thing is, um, sorry, what was the question again? I kind of like lost my tra train of thought. 
Um, my question was, when you reorder, do you order the inspection again? Because some people okay. are afraid of the quality being different the second time. Yeah. So again, like when you when you do that, you just want to make sure like the supplier you trust, obviously. So the first your first order, you always like things could be expensive, right? Because you want to air things be expensive because you're getting custom packaging for the first time. So the second time you send it to them, and it's, you know that's in the quote, right? And you could usually work your price down for the second order. Um, but usually I don't do that. Um, I'll get an inspection done maybe a couple of times later, but it usually comes down to how do they communicate with you? You know, how, how quick are they? How thorough are they? And what's the deal that they're offering you, right? Are they trying to just like slap you with the cheapest price they have with the shittiest quality? Or are they trying to say, Hey, I have three qualities here for you. I have my medium, low and high quality product. What would you like? This is what they offer. What would you like to go with? Right? Cause then I know they're actually looking after me and they kind of want to, you know, find a marketplace for me with my product and be like, okay, I seen it on Amazon. It's like, I gave them the link. I'll be like, here's the actual broad keyword for the product. You know, have a look. This is kind of what I want. You know, I want this guy's product, but made me with this extra in it as well. And they'll look at it and be like, okay, well, this guy says he has this. Maybe you should have this. You know, they're looking right after my best interest, right? If somebody's, if a supplier to me seems like they're just trying to, you know, get me out of the way, get my order done and just move on. Um, I'll have an inspection done usually twice in a row. That's awesome. Can you give us a couple of tips on what questions to ask when you're first introducing yourself? Because that's, you know, you're going to copy and paste, but hopefully you have, you know, there's like a, a few common questions that can flush out if they're a good supplier or not. Okay. Um, let me go back to screen share here. I'll just show you guys one. All right. So I'm looking at this product right here. So this is all the way to the top. All right, so this is this was a small one. Actually, let me get you a different one. Actually, you guys can read that right now. Um, all right, so this was kind of like a bigger one. Um, there you go. So I have an emergency order. We are Amazon seller. Blah blah. Like, you know, this brand name of our company. And then I'm looking to have 500 units made of each. Each unit should have one black boot dryer. You know, I'm looking for a good price only. Obviously, right? I'm looking forward to working with you. I also want custom packaging plus barcodes, barcodes and logo. Please send me a detailed quote, including shipping for all 500 units by air and quote uh, shipping all 500 by sea so I can see what's better. You know, temporary address is, and this is usually where Amazon sends your products to. So I go temporary address so they can quote me. And then please don't respond to a blank message. Please reply as soon as possible. So that's kind of how I, you know, try to start off my conversation with them just to make it quick, right? That's smart. Cause, you want to just cause, flush it out. It, and yeah. you know, get, get some conversation going. You want to get the conversation going, but the thing is also, if you just send them a huge paragraph, 99% of them are just going to send you back. Like, do you want black or white? And it's like, right. okay, you just, you just missed out. Like I had 200 character, you know, essay written and you just reply with like 10 characters, you know, or 10 words. So, so when you're looking at suppliers also, and you're narrowing it down, so let's say you message 10 and two of them you like, and you've narrowed it down. Do you start looking at other products they produce? How do you narrow it down? Let's say the price is the same for two. What would you pick over the other one? Um, you mean two, two suppliers make the exact same product for the exact same price. So right. you're asking, does that happen? Um, it does. Um, but then it kind of comes down to who's quicker. So who's, who's going to give me the best or the fastest lead time. So are they, some people may be able to make it in like 20 days time. So will make it in five days time. Right. So they'll complete it in five days and then it takes like seven to 10 days shipping. So it's in, in like say 15 days max. And the other guy might take like 30 days to come in. Right. So I look at that. So lead time is another important one. Another one is who's, who's messaging me back quicker. Like if I respond to them and I get a response back in two minutes or I have to wait in half an hour or I have to wait till next day every time. Right. So that's another important factor. Um, and if it comes down to that, I mean, I've never had anything worse than that. Then I'd probably look at how many employees they have, you know, who's actually the biggest company who seems the most legit. Have they been to festivals in, in China? Cause some companies like, you know, they show you a whole bunch of proof. Like, you know, we went to this huge festival. We're like a well-known, you know, we do work for Walmart. You know, that, I like to hear that kind of stuff and I like to see proof of it. So they go to huge conferences with Walmart, you know, and they work together with these big brands and then they show up like their whole studio and whatnot and they show you all the pictures of it. I like to see that as well. So let's talk about samples. When do you request the samples? How many samples do you recommend? Do you get one of each color? Um, what do you think? Yeah, so if you're doing a variation, like variation could be size, weight, 
you know, color, obviously, I would get a variation or a sample of each variation. I mean, it's always free in 99% uh, of the time. It's free on, on, in China. Those, you just got to pay for shipping. So you get a free sample. You just pay shipping, which is usually like, you know, 10 bucks, $20. It's not that expensive. And then you just get the product for free. So it'd be cheaper for you to get it from them than in the store even. So it's not a big deal. Um, but if yeah, samples, I get them always um, in the first time. So when you're starting your product, always get samples because it's good for pictures. If you're trying to do your own pictures, if you're trying to send them off to somebody else, you buy them, you send them to somebody else and then send it to your house. Um, it's just good to have as well that, you know, if you have a competitor or a, sorry, not a competitor, if you have um, a hijacker on your listing and Amazon won't remove them based on you, you just telling them, hey, they're infringing on my prop, my rights, they'll be like, hey, show proof. And you're like, well, I guess I got to order my bag or I got to order my thing and, you know, I got to come, you know, sh prove, right? So by the time, you know, you got your product actually purchased by somebody else's account because you can't purchase your own uh, product on Amazon because that's illegal. Um, they'll actually, they, you can't, they block you from that actually. But um, if you if you want to purchase, you have to get somebody else to purchase it. For me, I live in Canada. I'd have something from the States to do it. I have to drive to the border, pick it up and then send it over to my place, right? And then that time it already, you know, held you off five days or three days. So. Okay. So let me ask you this. This is a little bit um, off the track a little bit, which is, Let's say you only have 10 hours a week to get started on Amazon. You have a full-time job and a family. You don't have a lot of time to start. How do you recommend somebody divides their time in the learning about, like, would you spend half your time looking for a product to source, to find one, and the other half contacting suppliers? Or how would you break your time up? If you were, uh, let's say you're a, you're a parent of a kid and you only have 10 hours a week. Right. So that's a very important one. And I... I see that a lot, like I'm a young person, I actually have a lot of time myself, but there's a lot of people that I help. And I mean, I've seen a lot of success around me. And there's one one guy that I was talking to, he has, I think, five kids in the family. And he just had a regular job doing ice cream delivery. And what he did is he was driving his truck. So one thing he did was listen to podcasts all the time. He listened to podcasts, listen to YouTube videos. Just, you know, when you just have this information just, you know, blowing at your face the whole time, you're gonna pick up something along the way, right? So that's a really important one is, um, to start with. But if you're just at home, you're doing something, Amazon has a lot of lag time. So what I mean by that is your content suppliers, you're waiting for replies. So what I suggest is fill out your pipe drive. So just like sales out going to getting you know a car or like a salesman that's trying to sell cars, he has like a pipe drive. He's got all these customers that are coming there and he try to knock one, one off you know, at a time off his pipe drive, right? So he's trying to close these deals you know, one after the other. So what I'm saying is find a product that does well don't just stop. Find another product that looks good on Amazon, you know, using Jungle Scale or the new release method or something like that. Um, I have those videos on my channel as well. But um, you just got to look for products. And then when you find one, just keep looking for other ones. But then at the same time, reach out to supplier. Reach out to a whole bunch of them. You get one response, just reply to them. And usually, like, especially for me, they don't wake up to like 6 to 8 o'clock p.m. So I just, it's perfect time for me. Even if, say, if I had a full-time job, it's kind of like the time that I wouldn't be working anyways. So... I would just reply and then the next day I would start again and it's reply, right? And it's not about product research should never be rushed. It should be like what I always tell people it's the crappiest work of a job makes people the most money. So you got to kind of like really focus on product research. It's literally, you find the best product out there. You can do everything, you know, completely backwards and you'll still make a ton of money. But if you find a bad product and you do everything amazingly, it may sell all right, but not that great. So it's, Product research is literally king when it comes to Amazon. Um, and then it's, you know, content suppliers and whatnot and just getting that good price. I think this is a really good point to make because I know a lot of successful Amazon sellers and they are constantly looking for new products or talking to suppliers. It's not it, like it never ends. It just continuously, they're, they sort of do the same thing every single week, but with different products. They're looking for new things. They keep the dialogue going. However amount of time they have, they have sticks in the fire because things take time. I think that's something also Amazon's not is not a get rich quick scheme. It takes some time. It takes some patience. And again, the quality of the product matters a ton. You are right. There are people who like, you know, there are people who sell poorly, but with a really high, high demand product. Yeah, they're, that's they're the, still going to make money. That's your point. Yeah, that's that, that's definitely it. But what I say is it's not a um, quick rich scheme obviously but what i do say is once you find success it's um what do you want to call it it's exponential because 
like to me and it's not I'm me trying like to boast myself or whatnot but I make enough money that I can't even launch enough products I'm at that stage where I make too much profit that I can't launch another product even to you know put money to more products you know what I mean like if I say make ten thousand dollars profit I can't find enough products to launch with that ten thousand dollars because it's just too much money right so it's it's it goes one of two ways because you launch you say you have three thousand dollars right you launch one product that three thousand dollar product makes you three thousand dollars profit so now you're making six thousand dollars you put the three thousand dollars back into reinvestment into that product to restock it and the other three thousand starts a new one so now you have two they do that you have four and you have eight and it just it yeah it literally just exponentially grows and you get to the point where you have more money than time yeah literally that, yeah that, that definitely happens then then it's almost like you need help you start building a team that's what i have totally I have different yeah in a situation where it's totally different okay so this is great so let's talk about um a basic hmm other than aliexpress or alibaba do you have any other sources that people would start looking for let's say when they find they find something they want to make so Alibaba is definitely going to be 95% of somebody's um, suppliers. But when it comes to liquids, so I sell a lot of beauty. So topicals would be something I sell. Um, cream, stuff that goes on your skin. So beauty products, maybe it's a makeup. I don't sell makeup, but like it could be makeup or something that it goes to your skin, like a liquid lotion, um, cream of some sort, whatever it may be. That's when you'd go over to um, this website called thomas.net. Um, and they... They supply literally a lot of stuff. Oh, did I get to the wrong place? This is weird. I don't know why. Um, let me figure this out. Thomas, I don't know if I got this wrong. Oh, it's interesting. Thomas.net. Should I don't know why it's not coming up on Google as a search engine first. In, anyways, so. That's interesting. Okay, so but it's it is Thomas Donna. I'm like ninety percent sure. I can actually um, give me one second. Actually, I'm just gonna go with my resources second here. Uh, so Thomas Donna. Oh yeah, there's there's two more here. So you can go over to these two as well. Let's just go over that. All right, you can still see my screen. Can you still see it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you got. These ones as well. So you have free shopping China. So I'll give you as a tip. This is what I use for negotiation as well. So what you can do here is um, you just put in 68.com here and then you put in your keyword. So I'm going to sell a baseball bat, for example. And you'd search. So you'll, your language would be English, obviously. Um, let me find that. Let me take a little bit. English. Search. And then it probably will still show up in Chinese wording. So this is kind of the interesting part. So you, all you got to do is right click anywhere on the white. So you can be anywhere here or between these. And then you just go translate to English. And it just translates it all. And so you can see that. And this is where you kind of like, you can get suppliers here as well. But usually you would get suppliers from Alibaba and use it to ne negotiate. You'd be like, okay, this person's selling it for 14 won, you know, for the exact same bat. So you'd go over to, you know, your USD to won conversion and you'd find out how many won. It's, this would be like, you know, one. One dollar American, you know, fourteen ones, but one dollar American. So you use it to negotiate. And there's also the other side I was showing you. Um, or, what was I showing you guys there? Uh, 68.com. So this one is also another way you can negotiate. Um, it's also written in full Chinese, but you can there you can get suppliers from this one for sure. Um, if it loads. Uh, awesome. So I got a question for you. Yes. Let's talk about budgeting. If you like, have, um, what's a realistic budget to start? And then let's say you have 10 grand, how would you do, divvy it up uh, amongst beginning your Amazon journey for supplying? How would you divide it? So how would I supply my money? Um, let me go back to here. Um, so how would I supply or how would I divide my money to start a product? So I've had how much money, for example? 10,000. If I, oh, I've had 10,000. Okay, so 10,000 is a lot of money to start. Um, I would say start with 3,000 or left 10,000, find a product that's gonna do well and then stick with that. If you find success with that, then start doing more because there is a, a portion. So what I like to tell people is that there's a quick ramp up speed, I guess, to learning Amazon. 
And then there's like a 20% that takes you a time to understand. You know what I mean? Like you get the product research down pat, you get like how to launch, how to do shipping plans, um, you know, creating a listing. But then it's like, it's a little custom, you know, your probably gets caught up in customs, how to deal with that. One of the really tricky ones out there, which barely ever happens, but if it does, you need something like that's been through it before, right? It's all these little things. What I would say is start with one product instead of three and just start with one and then, you know, get good at it. So understand it all and then just not do it, but all fully understand it. And I'll actually, you know, get, make it easier for you to launch your second one. And once you start launching, you know, a second product, you'll be a lot quicker and you'll be a lot more, you know, thought out. If you do three at like, you know, let's say a two out of 10 level, it's going to be worse than doing one at a two out of 10 level and be like, Hey, I should have probably done this, this, and that. Now you're at like a seven out of 10 level. You know what I mean? So you would learn a bit along the way doing the first one and starting your next two. I think that's a great advice. So start with one, try to do it as best as you can. Learn the learning curve will be there and you can find out. And it's good to have a little extra in case that doesn't work. But again, there's a lot of groups out there. Um, you you have a group. Let's say somebody is about to pull the trigger and they have questions. Where can they reach out to you? Okay, so I have my Facebook. Obviously, I reply to all my messages on Facebook. So you can message me on Nicholas Bosch. It's a red truck in the profile picture. Um, you can also reach out to me at info at Um that's, my, that's our email for our YouTube channel. So I would respond to all the questions there. And... What I like to see, so if you guys want full in-depth help, I'm willing to do that. Um, but what I like to see, hear, I see from you guys is the Jungle Scout drop down. So like the actual, I'll show you what I mean. So what I like to see is if you're looking at, for example, this boot dryer, and you can be in a competition, that's great. Um, but if you want to sell this boot dryer, what I want you to tell me is go to Amazon and show me, I want to sell this product. So you send me the broadest keyword of it. So don't send me boot dryer, for men, don't send me this because that's just too broad, right? I want to see the broadest one, so that's boot dryer, right? So send me that keyword, and then also send me this this a screenshot of this. All you gotta do is this all, all pulls down, and you just literally just screenshot it. So um, and just send it over to me, and I'll like look at. It. I'll be like, okay, these are the numbers, okay. And then if it doesn't make sense, if I can't read this well enough, if I can't understand this enough, am I sharing by the way? No, you're not. But oh. um, Amazon seller 99 in the chat did say that you accidentally showed your fame bit login and password, so you should change those after this video. Oh, that's that's fine. Um, <laughs> big deal. I mean, I'm trying to be trans transparent for you guys. I think transparency is more worth it to me than trying to like hide everything, because in a, in a sense, like yeah, I should probably like hide everything, right? But that's what every seller does. If I like. I feel if I'm more transparent, I think more people will start to understand that maybe I'm just trying to be real. Like, I mean, it's it's a tough one, but I'll share again here. So back to this. So we got our Amazon product, right? So what I want to see is you got the boot dryer, right? So again, I was saying I want to see. I don't want to see this. Like, you can send it to me on uh, Facebook or email. If you're like, hey, can you look up or can you tell me this is a good product? I want you to send me just boot dryer, so that I can go to Amazon.com quickly search it in makes it nice and easy for me. And then also send me the picture of this because sometimes I can read or understand the product just based on this, but not always. So if I see this, I'll be like, okay, well, it looks like a couple big guys in there. So then I'd just use your keyword and I'd go to my computer myself, type it in, and I look at the results and look at the competition, look at, you know, maybe there's totally like a ton of different variations and be like, okay, um, here's how you can go about it. This is what I suggest you to do, right? And then I think that helps um, new people under, uh, new people start out because they're like, okay, I have these options and then I let them go with that. So I'm like, okay, you know, maybe you should do the black one, not the white one. You may should put this to it. Maybe you should add um, an extra attachment to it or you know, bundle this with that. Um, and then, you know, find the pricing, come back to me, you know, find your margins, come back to me and see if it's worth your time to go through with it. So. Amazing. Well, this has been super informative. Um, I know you have a YouTube channel. I've linked it in the description below. Um, do you want to give us a preview of what we might be going over in the next in the next show on part three? So in the next one, um, I guess it's really up to you. So we can definitely just go into um, you know how to create a listing, um, kind of like the tips and tricks of how to do it. Like how do I find the broadest keywords? How do I uh, find all my keywords? How do I you know sort them all through Excel and post them in there? What are some of the rules included with that? Um, how do I get my pictures done? Stuff like that. We can go through all the technicalities. 
Um, that's that's okay with me. Um, but other than that, there's yeah. I mean, I don't know what to think about like what would be next unless I actually do it. So I have to go into my actual seller account and do that. And I did create a new one just so you guys could actually see um, how I do it personally. Now I will slow myself down so that you guys can fully see what I'm doing. But yeah, that's kind of um, what I would talk about next. Um, I kind of hope that makes sense for you. Okay, sounds great. All right, guys, we'll call it a day and I'll see you guys uh, next week. Every Thursday, we're going to do at least eight of these. If you have any questions, reach out to us. Um, Amazon is huge. Jeff Bezos is nowhere near done. He's extremely hungry. And I feel like we're still in the first inning. And we're talking about e-commerce is like still less than 20% of commerce. We're really just getting started. So everyone don't panic if you haven't gotten started on Amazon yet. There's plenty of room for everybody, honestly. This is a great series because you know if you know some people are getting discouraged because there are items that are restricted. Um, if you're just doing retail arbitrage, you're going to the clearance center. It's really important to invest in your own products if you can get started. Think of it as a long-term gig, not just a quick flip. Think about it as a building, you know, systems and processes and learning how to get new products up. And e-commerce is the new way, especially since shipping is going to get faster and faster and faster to the point where you can get almost anything in an hour. I feel like that's coming soon. Yeah, I mean, like I can even touch base on that too. Amazon just came out with actually a new key um, where they can have access to your door and they can let you, you can actually, they can let themselves in and actually drop your products off inside your front door of your house. And they also have like the drone they're coming out with. They can fly a product package over to your house. So that's like really cool. But yeah, it's kind of interesting how like Bezos actually is going in and out of like the top or the richest man spot. He's kind of bouncing in and out. It's kind of funny. I know he's he's not going to stop. So and that's he's not going to be. He's one of the type of people that is not satisfied, and I think that's important when you sell on e-commerce in general. Don't sit back. Once you have some success, it can be taken away from you right away. So just make sure that you're continuously improving. It's it's not a set and forget. Yeah, and like another thing is I want to touch on is you know a lot of people are starting to say like Amazon's getting too competitive, but I totally disagree. Yeah, it might be a little tougher to find those you know just the simple product that you don't have to change up at all. And you don't have to brand it at all. You can sell it and make a ton of money. That those days are kind of over, but it's all about who has creativity, who can brand well, you know, who can make nice custom packaging, who could offer, you know, super high amounts of perceived value for your product, right? Because the custom packaging, really, what it is, is just a picture of an empty box, but it shows the shows the actual customer, like, wow, this is beautiful. This is well done. This is you know by a professional. They'll buy that over. You know, a Chinese product that just shows their product and it's all wrinkly and destroyed and you know floppy and it just looks like it just wouldn't throw in the garbage can and pulled back out and took a picture of it, right? So that's another very important part. But I also want to let you guys know that like a lot of people buy it on Amazon like a monthly basis. I feel like it's gonna be one of those things where it's gonna be like a daily basis. They're starting to sell Whole Foods, like their actual brand Whole Foods on Amazon too. So I think foods will be starting to be sold on Amazon where it become daily. So I don't think Amazon's gonna stop anytime soon. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. We'll see you next week. Sounds good.